In the last segment, we talked about how machine learning algorithms might be able to help us address some of the key problems that we're facing in biology that are associated with the, the massive amounts of data that the field is currently generating. Here, we're going to talk in more detail about the algorithms themselves, so the broad classes of machine learning algorithms, and we're also going to talk about key vocabulary terms that we'll need to use throughout this, this module of the course. So when we're thinking about machine learning algorithms, we're going to start with data. And there's the, these are the data that we're computing on, the data that we're trying to learn something from. And there are two broad classes of algorithms that are widely used to extract knowledge from these data. The first class of algorithms are called unsupervised algorithms. And these algorithms help us extract patterns directly from the data without imposing any knowledge about the problem of interest on, on the computer. And so these unsupervised algorithms really help us answer what patterns exist in the data, sort of independent of what we know about biological systems. A second type of algorithm is called a supervised algorithm. And these algorithms are really good at extracting detailed signals from the data. These algorithms do require that we impose some knowledge on the data. So we say, I care about being able to separate these genes from these other genes. And, it, and once we structure the problem in that way, the algorithm can ask, OK, what patterns in the data do a good job of separating the first set of genes from the second set of genes? And so now we're going to talk a little bit about a couple different problems and discuss whether or not we should use supervised or unsupervised algorithms to address them. In this first example, we've done a small screen and we've identified some genes that affect long-term memory. If we have a gene expression data set, which other genes also affect this process? And so there are some key words we should really be looking for here. Um, and so one, one set of key concepts is that we've already identified some genes, and then we're, we're trying to find additional genes from that data. And because we, we've already got some key knowledge we can build from, uh, I would suggest addressing this, uh, this question with a supervised approach. For the second example, we have a cohort of patients and we've measured some key genotypes as well as the effective therapeutic dose of a drug. When we have new patients, we'd like to be able to predict what dose we should use. Um, should this be a supervised or an unsupervised approach? Well, because we've actually already measured the effective therapeutic dose for certain patients, I would address this by using a, a supervised method. So that would be my technique of choice, given that keyword. In this third example, we, we've collected biopsies and measured gene expression. And now we'd like to know if there are patterns of gene expression that, that, sort of, that group patients. And essentially, we're asking if these can be maybe different molecular groups, even though perhaps histologically, these patients all look similar. And so for this, because we're asking if there are patterns that, that group patients, for this I would use an unsupervised approach. Let's go back to our first example and talk about the structure of the problem, and let's learn some key vocabulary related to supervised learning. So in this one, remember, we've done a small screen and we've identified some genes that affect long-term memory. We also have a gene expression data set, which we'd like to use to predict which other genes also affect this process. We're going to set up a matrix like this, where the columns of the matrix are samples. So sample one would be the, the first uh, sample that the, we assay gene expression on. Sample two would be the second sample. And the rows of the matrix are genes. So in this case, gene one would be the first gene, gene two would be the second gene, gene three would be the third gene. And at each sample gene intersection, we have a color where Blue, in this case, indicates low expression, and yellow indicates high expression. And so sample 1, gene 1, has low expression, while, sample, while gene 1 is expressed highly in, for example, sample 6. So with this matrix, where we have our samples in columns and our genes in rows, let's talk about the problem. So we have uh, genes that we've actually labeled. right? So we have genes that affect long-term memory. And so for any given gene, gene 1, for instance, our, our screen showed that it did affect long-term memory. For gene 2, our screen showed that it did not affect long-term memory. For gene 3, our screen showed that it did affect long-term memory. So what this tells us is that these are our examples. These are the, the entities that we know something about. 
In addition to examples, we also have features. The way we think about features is these are the things that describe the examples that we know something about. So we know that gene 1 uh, is associated with long-term memory. We also can describe gene 1 by saying that it has low expression in sample 1, low expression in sample 2, low expression in sample 3, high expression in sample 4, high expression in sample 5, and high expression in sample 6. So these are the features of the gene, They're the, 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 the items that really describe that gene. And at the end we have whether or not the gene was associated with long-term memory, and these we call labels. These are the, the characteristics that we have associated with the sample that we really care about and that we really want to have the computer predict in the future. And these labels can be divided into things that are canonically called positives, so the genes we care about. So for instance, here we're trying to find additional genes that affect this process, so we want to find more genes where the label is yes. So we would call the yeses positives and the noes negatives. And so this third one here, because it's a yes, gene 3 is a positive example. When we're talking about machine learning, we're talking about building a model. And this model will be built with an algorithm that combines the examples and features and labels to make predictions about new examples. Or, put another way, if we have this black box here that's our model, we'd like to be able to take a new example, so for instance this gene that doesn't have any label, feed that into the model, and then get a prediction out. So, for example, don't count on it. So the model doesn't think that this gene is likely to be involved in long-term memory. And we would call this, this final output a prediction from the model. So this example goes through some of the vocabulary that we're going to be using when we talk about machine learning techniques and specifically supervised machine learning techniques. We'll talk in future segments about how we can actually build this black box model which allows us to make these new predictions.